Good morning. It's Monday, November 8th, and yesterday was the very 50th running of the New York City Marathon. Now, many of you looking at me now might not think that I was capable of running a marathon, but I ran 13 marathons in my life, three of them in New York. I started running at the age of 47 because... I was overweight, and I had to do do something to correct that situation. So I started running. I went to Florida. I visited my parents, and they had a large pond on the premises where they lived in plantation. And I decided to get up in the morning and run around the pond. That was about three-quarters of a mile. And I struggled with those three-quarters of a mile. But when I came home to New York, I decided that I was going to become a runner. And I was successful at it. I stayed it and I loved it. I ran for over 30 years until my back finally uh, finally gave out. And my first marathon was the Stephen Talkhouse Marathon. Now, the Stephen Talkhouse Marathon didn't last very long, but it started in Montauk and it ended in Southampton. And I think it ended at some restaurant or something that was known as Stephen Talk House. Or maybe it was an Indian chief or something. Who was it named? I do not remember the facts associated with the name of that marathon. But in any event, it's the only marathon that I never finished. And I never finished because I did not understand what it took to finish a marathon. I went 22 miles and I was extremely tired and exhausted at that point in time. I stopped at a rest stop that they had along the way and just waited for the rescue vehicle to come along and pick me up and take me back to the finish line. So that was my first month. But then I ran New York. I ran Washington, D.C. I ran Honolulu. I ran Bermuda. I ran many places. In Bermuda, I actually ran with Gary Murky. Now, I knew Gary Murky because he ran the Super Runner Shop in Huntington. He owned that. But Murky also was the winner of the first New York City Marathon. He won that race in a time of 2 hours and 31 minutes. And he was a general all-around nice guy. And I got to run with him in Bermuda because he opened a runner shop in Bermuda. He opened a sneaker store down there, and he would come down, and we would run the marathon. And I would race alongside him for about the first 50 yards, and then he would disappear into the distance. And the same thing happened with Greta Weitz and Rod Dixon, who also ran in in those Bermuda marathons. And my marathoning career was really great. I loved it. And I remember one New York City when it wasn't such a nice day, and it was mean and cold and windy. I actually ran the race wearing tights, and I remember coming off the 59th Street Bridge and falling, but I did not hit the ground. I bumped into the guy next to me, and they caught me, and that was a dangerous place to run the 59th Street Bridge because the paving, and on the bridge, was in the paving were iron grates with little things that stuck up from them. So if you fell there, you could get cut badly or or something. But I managed to stay up and I managed to finish that race. And another thing was sometimes my brother-in-law would come and watch the race and he would be standing somewhere on First Avenue after we came off the bridge and maybe we still had to go up to the Bronx and everything. But I would spot him and I would be all sweaty and I would run over to hug him and he ran away all the time, of course. And the other thing that was wonderful about the New York City Marathon at that time, the Dix Hills Runners Club, which was in Huntington and consisted of a lot of people who were running, we would have a bus that took us all to the marathon. And on the ride home, we would have a hero, a six-foot hero and stuff like that. 
So that was very nice because we had a group of people that were going down. They were serious runners. And I'll tell you another thing. In order to run a marathon, you don't have to be really good. But what you have to do is train. My training regimen was something exhausting for most people to think about even. I would start about 12 or 15 weeks before the race, and I would gradually increase my weekly running schedule from 35 miles a week all the way up to 80 miles a week. Can you imagine running 80 miles a week? That would be something like this. Five miles one day, ten miles the next day, and then on the weekends, maybe 15 or 20 miles in Sunken Meadow Park on the trails, you know. And a group of people, we would do it. And if you trained, it was easy to run a marathon because you had the stamina. And I also developed a routine, a schedule, see. I used to run two marathons a year. And I would run the first marathon, like New York City, or the Jersey Shore, or Washington, D.C., because those were all in November, October. And the reason I did that is because then, on January 15th or so, Martin Luther King weekend, we would go to Bermuda, and we would run that. So if I ran those two marathons... Within, say, a six to eight week period, I really only had to train for one of them. I'd train for the one in November. And then I would be in good enough shape with a minimal amount of additional training. After I had run the New York City Marathon or the Washington, D.C. Marathon, I would then be able to run Bermuda without a lot of training to run Bermuda. And Bermuda was more of a fun marathon than anything. It was a small group. 250 people, and once I even got my my picture in the newspapers there. But I'll tell you an interesting thing about the Washington, D.C. marathon. That was a tough marathon, and it was tough because of one thing. That marathon finished at the Iwo Jima Monument, and in order to get to the Iwo Jima Monument, you had to run up a very steep hill at the 25-mile mark. So here you are, struggling the whole way around, and then you get to the 25-mile mark, which you caught a sort of say, oh, jeez, I'm ready, I'm finished. I'm, you know, you know that it's all over, actually. And then you're faced with this run up this very steep hill to the monument. But it was great. It was great. Being a runner in those days, it was great. I loved it. I met a lot of very, very nice people, men and women. I ran with somebody, Althea Weatherby, who was a woman in her seventy in her seventies at that point in time, and she was running marathons. And her son was an astronaut. So one time she told me she went to Houston to run a marathon and her son called her from out of space. So I met a lot of interesting people running, very nice people. A lot of them worked for Grumman, which is no longer on the island. Before I forget, I ran the Long Island Marathon several times, and I even ran it once on my 50th birthday. And so that was it. That was my marathon career. I wish I was in good enough shape to do it again, but I'm not. So I bid you all a good day, and I'll see you in the morning.